Welcome to K Passionate. I'm your host, KP, a marine biologist with over a decade's worth of experience working with marine mammals like sea otters. Once hunted to the brink of extinction, sea otters have thankfully rebounded to reclaim two thirds of their historic range. Now we've talked a lot about how this conservation effort is widely known to be one of the greatest of all time. One thing we haven't talked about is how conservationists were able to relocate sea otters to create stable populations in their previous ranges. In fact, next Saturday, I'll actually be hosting a charity event for the Alaka Alliance, a nonprofit organization of indigenous leaders working to restore sea otters to the Oregon coast. So in preparation of that event, which will take place on October 16th, I thought we'd take a deeper dive into the logistics, costs, benefits, and even disadvantages to the relocation of sea otters. But before we do that, here's your obligatory reminder to like, subscribe, and head down to the descriptions below for more information on the Alaka Alliance and where you can catch that charity stream. Previously on this channel, we talked about how sea otters were first protected by the Fur Seal Treaty of 1911. At the time, so few sea otters remained that many researchers believed the species to be fated for extinction. For example, less than 200 southern sea otters remained off the coast of Southern California. And northern sea otters were limited to a few isolated populations in the Aleutian Islands National Wildlife Refuge in Alaska, which was established in 1913, shortly after the passage of the Fur Seal Treaty where they would be safe from human interference for over 50 years. However, in 1969, at the height of the Cold War, something unbelievable happened. The US Atomic Energy Commission decided to test the latest nuclear bombs on the Alaskan island of Amchitka, home to hundreds of critically endangered sea otters. These nuclear tests would be the largest the US had ever attempted. The plan, horrified biologists and conservationists from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, who were kind of like, uh, can we not maybe nuke the National Wildlife Refuge? Maybe we can talk about this a little bit more. Please stop. And when the Atomic Energy Commission came back and was like, eh, we're, we're, we're good with it, we're gonna do it anyway. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife launched the greatest conservation effort of all time they would capture hundreds of these northern sea otters and relocate them to areas off the coast of BC, Washington, and even Oregon. Now speaking from experience, transporting sea otters is a logistical nightmare. Half of the sea otters that I work with, Mac, Koenig, Taz, Katmai, were all transported from the Alaska Sea Life Center down to the Vancouver Aquarium. A lot of things have to be in place for this to work out. You're talking paperwork, the animals have to be on ice almost constantly because as we've talked about, sea otters have an incredible metabolism and a very dense fur coat. You need to have vet staff on site on the transport at all times in case there are emergencies. Back in the 70s where a lot of the knowledge and technology that we know today did not exist. And I can't even imagine what it would be like with more than one animal at a time. And sadly, not all of the sea otters that were originally transported survived that transport, but those that did flourished. 59 sea otters were transported to Washington State, and since that time, they've grown at a rate of 8.2%. 
A survey in 2004 counted 743 sea otters off the Washington coast, and current estimates have them well over a thousand, even stretching as far as the Puget Sound or down to the San Juan Islands. Here in Canada, the Department of Fisheries teamed up with their U.S. counterparts to translocate 99 sea otters to the west coast of Vancouver Island. And that same survey conducted in 2004 found that that population has grown to over 3,000 individuals. In 1989, a completely separate population of sea otters was found in the coastal central area of British Columbia. No one really knows where they've come from. Some scientists argue that they must be survivors of the fur trade, while still others think that they are migratory animals from the translocated populations. Regardless, there are now hundreds of individuals and their population climbs every single year. And this has had a profound impact on coastal environments, because as we've learned in videos like this one, right up here, sea otters are what's known as a keystone species which is a species that supports the entire weight of the ecosystem. Without that keystone species, those ecosystems would simply collapse or drastically change. And many scientists actually believe that sea otters are the most potent keystone species on the planet. If you don't believe me, I've posted sources and citations in the descriptions below. And as we learned in last week's Deeper Dive, the dramatic decline of sea otters through the 18th and 19th century led to an explosion in their prey, creating sea urchin barrens, that are a bit like underwater deserts. Sadly though, the reintroduction of this amazing species is not without controversy. Because, at least here in British Columbia, a lot of the indigenous peoples were not consulted with the reintroduction of sea otters and had no say when, where, or how this would happen. Sea urchins and abalone were a primary source of income and food in many of these communities, and some estimates put them at about a $7 million loss due to the reintroduction of sea otters. But that same estimate also shows that the reintroduction of sea otters and the regrowing of the kelp forest has led to a dramatic increase in things like lingcod and rockfish populations and about an $11 million Canadian revenue increase. Sea otter tourism alone is worth over $42 million a year. But the sad truth is this income is often not felt in indigenous communities who sometimes lack boats or fishing licenses. And several of those sources cited in the descriptions down below note that a significant proportion of the communities that oppose or regret the reintroduction of sea otters were those that were not consulted. So that brings me to the Alaka Alliance and their goal at reintroducing sea otters off the Oregon coast. The Alaka Alliance is a nonprofit organization made up of indigenous leaders. And that's a big reason why I'm not just a vocal supporter of their cause. I'm hosting a 24-hour charity event over on my Twitch channel. Because not only are they passionate about the conservation effort, but they have rightful agency in the future of their land, the Oregon coast. Previous attempts to repopulate these waters were part of the same reintroduction plan brought about by the nuclear <laughs> explosions. Uh, no. Biologists from the Oregon Game Commission, now known as the Oregon Fish and Wildlife, came to Alaska to help relocate about 90 individual sea otters back down to the Oregon coast. While many of them survived, they also slowly disappeared. And by 1982, they were all gone. Most scientists actually suspect that those sea otters migrated north and joined the growing population in Washington. Unfortunately, these sea otters were never tagged, so what happened to them remains a mystery. And while these recovery programs are still one of the most successful conservation efforts of all time, I think maybe we can do a little bit better, scientifically and culturally. So I hope you'll join me next Saturday on October the 16th for the 24-hour Twitch stream in support of the Alaka Alliance. Check the descriptions below for links to my Twitch channel, as well as all the cited sources about the Alaka Alliance. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time when we take a deeper dive.
trying to act excited. Do I look excited? Yeah. Do I look like bold? Just channel your inner one. <clears throat> At the time, so few sea otters remained that many researchers. <laughs> you're laughing at me. You want me to be excited and you laugh at me. And northern sea <clears throat> and northern sea otters were limited to just a few isolated populations in the Aleutian Islands northern Alaskan refuge of 